African woman through dance. The frustration one gets when the power goes off and the inner anger of a woman. Tell you what we did was not just imagination, it was what I felt. Maybe like now the poem is all about lights and no light. What's that thing you experience? Well, how do you feel when there is light? When you talk of electricity, when there is light, how do you feel? Do you feel happy? International. President Mohamed Buhari speaks exclusively to NTA News, restates commitment to avoiding expenditure mistakes of the past. Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development unfolds plans to cut wheat importation and save more than $4 billion from ban on importation. Nigeria inches close to electronic satellite border patrol as the army deploys combat motorbikes to curb insurgency. It's good to have you join us on NTA International News. I'm Taiwo Odusonya. President Muhammadu Buhari, at the end of his official visit to Qatar this Monday, took time off to field questions from NTA's news correspondent Adamu Sambo on a number of issues before leaving Doha. In it, the president restated his commitment to security of lives and property, anti-corruption crusade, and improving the living standard of Nigerians. The president said he will not be stampeded into making expenditure mistakes of the past. Adam Sambo reports. Implementation of the Treasury single account by the Buhari administration resulted in the savings of about 2.7 trillion naira. Some recoveries have also been made from those who looted the nation. Why won't the money be used in the provision of infrastructure? A question posed by NTN News to President Muhammad Buhari. Infrastructure, as you know, does not spring overnight. There is supposed to be a plan. There is supposed to be uh, some feasibility studies. Uh, contractors are identified given the, the, the documents to go and court, and then tenders go out. That's the normal thing. So just because we have stumbled into TSA money, 2.7 trillion, as you said, we just don't start uh, issuing contracts left, right, and center. This is what the previous administration did. If we are punishing people for doing that, why should we go into the same mistake ourselves? It wouldn't make a lot of sense at all. What we are hoping, maybe by the end of this budget, we will have no deficit because of the money we are mopping up from uh, doubtful uh, areas. On his recent engagements in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the state of Qatar, President Buhari described them as not only necessary but critical to the economic development of Nigeria. It's necessary that um, I try and uh, establish uh, good rapport with OPEC member countries uh, uh, so that uh, we can strategize on how to improve the oil market. Uh, this is very, very necessary for Nigeria. Uh, Nigeria, in spite of the enormous uh, uh, money we got, we failed to diversify our economy and now we are paying dearly. And we need the cooperation of uh, other OPEC countries uh, to see how we can stabilize the market. Uh, secondly, uh, they have got investments companies uh, that are very viable, and uh, uh, we are trying to sell the idea of if they can invest in Nigeria, especially in our infrastructure of power, oil and gas, and transportation generally, uh, because uh, Nigeria now cannot finance th those vital infrastructural uh, development. Some people back home have started insinuating 
that the focus of your government is gradually shifting from the West to the Arab nations. Some even say you are trying to Islamize Nigeria. How will you respond to that? I think that's an unfair observation. Within the week I was sworn in, I went to Germany, invited by G7. Then I went to United States. Why isn't it that nobody made comment? And just because now I have been to Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and UAE, and they are raising observation. So head or tail, you cannot win in Nigeria. The president also reacted to the recent hostilities in Benue State, saying his administration is committed to finding a lasting solution. Uh, the problem about um, uh, cattle rearers and sedentary farmers, I think, is as old as Nigeria itself. Uh, the disappointing thing is that um, what was started in the First Republic uh, couldn't be sustained in terms of uh, having cattle roots and grazing areas, where some infrastructure is put in terms of earth dams, uh, windmills, and even uh, veterinary clinics. So it's the duty of the government now to come together through the governor and try and uh, reestablish the cattle routes and the grazing areas. And this can be done with the cooperation of state governors. Finally, Your Excellency, for three days you were in Medina and Mecca alongside some governors, prominent Nigerians and ulamas praying to God. If I may ask, what did you tell your creator, the Almighty Allah? That's between me and him. Look at <laughs> telling me to tell me what I tell my God. <laughs> Adam Usambu, NTA News. And from the National Assembly comes a report that the Senate has passed for said reading the amended 2015 Federal Capital Territory Appropriation Act. The amendment gives effect to the implementation of the 193.8 billion Naira capital budget provisions and extends the FCT financial year to 31st March 2016. National Assembly correspondent Grace Oyenobi reports. With four weeks left for its implementation, Senate accelerated the passage of the FCT 2015 Appropriation Act by stepping down its Rule 79 to read the bill for the second and third time and passed it. The act is now to be scheduled for harmonization at a conference between the Senate and House Appropriation Committees. Also at plenary, Senate advised the presidency to restructure and reposition the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, to meet the challenges of drug traffickers using Nigerians to traffic drugs. This was contained in a motion by Senator Benga Shafa from Lagos State and 21 other senators. The involvement of Nigerians in this dangerous enterprise is tarnishing the image of the country. Our nationals are viewed with suspicion and subjected to demeaning treatment in, at airports across the world as a result of this negative perception. I urge that the NDLEA be strengthened to have additional capacity to interface with other foreign sister security agencies to prevent Nigerian couriers from taking advantage of the security lapses in those airports. When you go on campaign tours, you find most of our youths under the influence of drug. My addition is what happens to uh, those who are already hooked on drugs? The federal government should make arrangements for drug rehabilitation centers. A rapid increase in Nigerian use at the moment, in pregnant and use of just very worrisome, and we need to curb it before it escalates beyond, more than this. And particularly also the observation of where prescription drugs are actually being used and being abused. This also needs action. It was referred to the Senate Committee on Drugs and Narcotics to consider, among other things, an urgent amendment of Section 23 of the Pharmaceutical Council of Nigeria Act to include the sale of prescription pills over the counter as an offense punishable by the act. From the National Assembly, Grace Oyenubi, NTA News. Moving on to other matters, the issue of implementation of the Abuja Master Plan came under focus this Tuesday as guests on Good Morning Nigeria examined the challenges of administering the Federal Capital Territory. Ngufan Chiaji 
reports. The federal capital territory, one of Africa's fastest growing cities, being the nation's capital, it has continued to attract millions of Nigerians, especially job seekers, hence overstretching the available infrastructure. This development, however, has given rise to the heavy traffic on roads, green areas taken over by illegal buildings, poor environmental sanitation, as well as lack of access to basic social amenities. They noted that Abuja's initial plan to accommodate only about 5.9 million persons compounded the problem of infrastructure in addition to lack of continuity and policies by successive SCT administrations. If we had let Abuja to be developed by technocrats, it would have done a lot better than we are doing now. Create new districts to make provision for available land allocation. People can do what we call ride sharing. It's not everybody that wants to drive into the city every day, but we can at least have neighbors coming in with one single car, four or five passengers in that car, by doing that, you have relieved the road. Senator Dino Malaye, Senate Committee Chairman on FCT, says the battle of sanitizing the city is one that can be achieved without fear of favor and enforcement of sanctions to defaulters. The committee have given 21 days ultimatum to clean up the city. And if by the expiration of our ultimatum, we find out that there's no um, frantic effort in um, I'm um, sanitizing the city. I'm sure heads will roll. In Abuja, Wofan Shaji, NT News. Nigeria will be saving $4.6 billion annually from the importation of wheat. This follows the certification of the quality of the produce for local consumption by the country's millers. The Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Audi Ogbe, stated this at a media briefing in Abuja. Chukunonso Mo has the details. Climate conditions have resulted in low-level production of wheat in Nigeria. While the country consumption of the produce remains high, the market gap is filled by massive importation of the commodity. The present administration has therefore stated its commitment to reverse this trend. This year, 100,000 hectares, a hectare is a football field by the way, have been cultivated in the states of the far north and we want to say to Nigerians that if we continue this program for the next three, four years, Nigeria will become self-sufficient in wheat. Our productivity of wheat rose from 1.5 to 2 tons per hectare to now 5 to 6 tons per hectare. And we feel that these varieties will give a lot of opportunities for Nigeria to grow wheat profitably and competitively. The minister, before elaborating on many developmental programs to be embarked upon by the federal government, which includes labor-intensive family enterprise aimed at reversing rural urban migration, debunked the rumor that the ministry is probing the immediate past minister and current president of the African Development Bank. Indeed, we are proud of the work he left behind, that we intend not to engage in any policy somersaults that will continue to deepen and to widen the programs he left behind. The ministry is set to launch its agricultural roadmap in the next two weeks. In Abuja, Chukunon Sumo, NTA News. A Nigerian delegation tasked with spearheading the first phase of the proposed nationwide mechanization of the agricultural sector is in China to seek partnership with the country's biggest mechanized farming equipment producer. Representatives are from the Northeast, Northwest, Southeast, and North Central Nigeria. Julia Taino reports. To improve Nigeria's food security, a new federal policy has given the mandate to 11 states of the Federation to pilot the new National Agricultural Mechanization Project. Looking to partner with the biggest in the business, the Nigerian delegation is in China visiting facilities and factories of the country's largest manufacturer of farming equipment. Mobilize uh, Nigerian farmers, entrepreneurs, both uh, also including uh, foreign investors uh, to our endowments in agriculture so that uh, people uh, 
uh, change focus on an area that is uh, very potential. Far in Ebony State, we have secured over 50,000 hectares of land for mechanization of agriculture, particularly on rice production. Situated in China's ancient capital, Luoyang, the China-Africa Agricultural Machinery, the maker of China's first tractor in 1955, has grown to include the production of a whole new range of agricultural machinery for large and small-scale mechanized farming. With a staff strength of 16,000 employees, the production plant in Luoyang manufactures one tractor in three minutes. The Nigerian team was let loose in a world of tractors and other exotic farming tools. It doesn't mean every farmer needs to own a tractor. You can have a system where you just provide the services that uh, this machinery has the capacity to uh, deliver. Uh, so you could group farmers and um, uh, they could hire these tractors or government could support them in hiring these tractors. Uh, ownership would be left to uh, large-scale farmers and uh, or cooperatives who have grouped themselves. All things being equal, Nigerian farmers are set to start plowing their fields without breaking a sweat. From Luoyang in Henan province, Julieta Aino, NTA News. You're still watching the news on NTA International from Abuja, Nigeria's capital. We have more news after the break. State governments and loans is the subject of discourse on Good Morning Nigeria on Wednesday, 2nd March 2016. The governors of Edo and Bauchi states, Adams Oshomole and Mohamed Abubakar, the chairman Senate Committee on Loans and Foreign Debts, Shehu Sani, as well as the Director General, Debt Management Office Nigeria, Dr. Abraham Wangpo, will be our guest. Time is 7 o'clock in the morning, live on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. Join us. Nigerians, our fearless officers and men of the Nigerian military are winning the war against Boko Haram. Today, all occupied territories have been recovered and Boko Haram has been degraded. Our affected brothers and sisters are getting their lives back. However, they are now after you and me. In our mosques, churches, schools, motor parks, markets, entertainment centers, and public gatherings. Be vigilant. Be security conscious. Report suspicious persons, objects, and movements to the police and other security agencies. The security of our nation is a duty for you and me. Nigeria unite against terrorism. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. Nigeria is now closer to implementing an electronic satellite border patrol system, an intensive computerized surveillance system to be used by the Nigerian Immigration Service for efficient border security and control. The indication came when the Minister of Interior, Abdurrahman Dembazao, was at the Nigerian Immigration Service headquarters to monitor the pilot project for the system, as was demonstrated by an ICT firm. Justin Bemouye has the report. The problems of border management, border control, continue to persist, continue to give us a lot of problems. And that is because of uh, lack of facility. The manual way of controlling people in and out is now over. That was five months ago when the Nigeria Immigration Boss set the agenda for the new lease of operations in the service during his first parade with his men after his appointment. Today, he has taken a giant step towards actualizing this remarkable new phase of operations at the nation's borders. And I have fixed up some sensitive camera that we can, uh, we can communicate right from this studio room here with Ilela. It's just a demonstration which maybe with, uh, through your efforts we can replicate it to other uh, basic uh, uh, 
border areas. The Minister of Interior, after keenly monitoring the functionality of the demo e border monitoring system, pointed out the challenges facing effective border control to include porous border blind spots and unstable power supply, saying it should be put into consideration for rapid response capacity. Because you have a problem, you identify a problem, not in the Leila borders where you have mm. okay. your men. You have it somewhere there in the remote there are no men. part of the black spot, blind spot. Yeah. Now, you identify through your camera that there is a challenge there. There are human traffickers moving, you know, mm -hmm. in and out. Now, you must have the capacity to respond rapidly. Mm -hmm. so, so these two must go together. Commander, Commander Center, do you, you get the video, video from, from the, the, from the, the car? car? Yes, yes I, have I have the video, video from, from the, the car, car now. Describing the pilot project for e-border surveillance system, which was installed at a checkpoint at the nigeria niger border. The ICT firm maintained the initiative will promote city and national security. Justin Bemunyi, NTA News. Meanwhile, the Nigerian army has deployed a platoon of newly launched combat motorbikes into their areas of responsibility in the Northeast. The Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tuko Burotai, gave the indication during his in-theater visit to some locations in Borno State. Defense correspondent Mohamed Abdukadri reports. For the first time, the Nigerian Army introduced motorbike in counter-terrorism operation in the Northeast aimed at attaining improved combat efficiency. The Chief of Army Staff tasked the commander of the motorbike platoon to make the best of the platform, which he described as force multiplier. With the added firepower speed, as well as with the communication that is being added, the reach of uh, this motorbike will be a very important element in ensuring that our troops maintain the initiative and continue the exploits they have so far achieved. The rugged customized bikes designed with specifications to carry arms and ammunition are expected to counter and neutralize ordinary motorcycles that characterize offensive operation by Boko Haram terrorists. With the induction of combat motorcycle into the theater, maneuverability and mobility into the difficult terrains by the troops is further guaranteed, especially when chasing terrorists to their camps and corridors. From Damboa, in Borno State, Mohammad Abdel Kadri, NTA News. Business news is next. The equities market closed today on a positive note as the all-share index appreciated